Hello friends and welcome to the world of semiconductors. These tiny components are nearly invisible yet absolutely essential in our modern lives. From your smartphone to your car, semiconductors are at the heart of countless technologies we rely on daily. In this video, we'll dive into the basics of semiconductors, the history, the intricate value chain and the geopolitical dynamic shaping this critical industry. We'll also highlight some of the key companies driving innovation and growth in this fascinating field. So stay tuned. Now imagine a world without your smartphone, laptop or even your car. Hard to picture that, right? At the core of these technologies are semiconductors. These materials, which can conduct electricity under certain conditions, are perfect for controlling electrical signals. They sit between conductors like copper, which allow electricity to flow easily, and insulators like plastic, which don't. Think of silicone, a material found in abundance in sand, as star of the show. Let's talk about one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century, the transistor. Picture a tiny switch that can turn electrical signals on and off. Simple, right? But this little switch is a building block of all modern day electronics. Before transistors, computers were massive, unreliable and power hungry because they used vacuum tubes. Transistors changed everything. Then came integrated circuits or ICs. Imagine packing a whole city of tiny switches, resistors and capacitors onto one small piece of silicone. That's what an IC does and it revolutionized technology by making devices smaller, faster and more reliable. Can you think of a device you use daily that might have semiconductors inside? Let us know in the comment section below. I remember the first time I opened up an old computer and saw a circuit board. It was like looking at a miniature city made of silicone and metal. Little did I know, those components were changing the world as we speak. The story of semiconductors begins in the late 1940s at Bell Labs. William Shockley, John Bardeen and Walter Brighton invented the transistor, earning them the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1956. But the real boom began in 1958 when Jack Kilby at Texas Instruments invented the integrated circuit. Imagine the early days of Silicon Valley bustling with innovation. Companies like Fairchild Semiconductor and Texas Instruments were the trailblazers. Fairchild, founded by a group of visionary engineers, laid the groundwork for what Silicon Valley is today. By the 1980s, the industry started to evolve with the rise of fabulous companies, those focusing on designing chips but outsourcing manufacturing. This shift led to the birth of pure play foundries like the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company or TSMC for short, which focused solely on manufacturing chips designed by others. Ever wonder what it's like to work in the early days of Silicon Valley? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've always been fascinated by how a few small startups in Silicon Valley grew to giants that changed the world as we know. It's a testament to innovation and determination. The semiconductor value chain is like a finely tuned orchestra, with each section playing a crucial part. Let's follow the journey of a semiconductor chip from design to end use. Stage 1 is the design. When it comes to design, companies like Synopsys, Candis, and Siemens EDA provide the tools that chip designers use to create new chips, acting as architects of the semiconductor world. Intel and AMD are well known for designing powerful processors that serve as the brain of our computers. NVIDIA, famous for its graphics processing units or GPUs, produces chips that are essential for gaming, AI and data centers. Arm Holdings designs the architecture used in most smartphones and licenses it to other companies. Next, we have fabrication. In the fabrication sector, TSMC stands out as the world's largest and most advanced semiconductor foundry, manufacturing chips for clients like Apple, Nvidia and Qualcomm. Samsung not only makes its own chips, but also provides foundry services for other companies. While Intel is renowned for its processors, it also manufactures chips for other companies. Thirdly, we have assembly, testing and packaging or ATP for short. In the ADB sector, ASC Group and Amcor Technology play crucial roles. These companies take the fabricated chips and package them into usable products, ensuring they work correctly. Fourthly, we have materials. In the materials sector, 
Shin Itsu Chemical and Hemlock Semiconductor provide the high purity silicon wafers used as a base of the chips. Meanwhile, GSR Corporation and TOK supply prosthetics used in the photolithography process to create intricate patterns on silicon wafers. Think of prosthetics like a stencil that helps create detailed design on the chips. And finally, we have manufacturing equipment. In the manufacturing equipment sector, ASML, a Dutch company, is the only maker of extreme ultraviolet lithographic machines or EUV, which are crucial for producing the latest generation of chips. Imagine a high-tech projector that uses light to itch tiny patterns onto silicon wafers. Additionally, LAM research and applied materials provide the tools needed for itching, which involves cutting into wafer and depositing materials on those wafers. Which part of the semiconductor value do you find the most fascinating? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. The semiconductor industry isn't just about technology, it's also deeply intertwined with geopolitics. The US leads the semiconductor sales, but a significant portion of manufacturing happens in Taiwan, primarily by TSMC. This reliance on Taiwan creates vulnerabilities, especially amid geopolitical tensions with China. The US government has responded with the CHIPS Act, aiming to boost domestic semiconductor manufacturing. However, replicating Taiwan's success is challenging due to its established ecosystem and cost advantages. Doesn't forget China, which produces only 7% of the world's semiconductors but consumes 35%. China is aggressively pursuing self-sufficiency in semiconductors but catching up with technological and manufacturing expertise of countries like the US, Taiwan and South Korea is a daunting task. How do you think geopolitical tensions will affect technology you use? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. So what does this all mean? Semiconductors are the backbone of modern technology with a complex value chain that spans the globe. Companies like TSMC, Intel and Nvidia play critical roles, driving innovation and growth. However, the industry also faces significant geopolitical risk. The GIPS Act is a step towards reducing these risks, but the global nature of the semiconductor value chain means no country can do it alone. For investors, the semiconductor industry offers tremendous opportunities. Companies in this space have strong competitive positions, often operating as monopolies or duopolies in their niches. However, it's critical to stay aware of the geopolitical dynamics and potential risks. Are you considering investing in the semiconductor industry? If so, what are your thoughts? Well folks, thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more deep dives into the fascinating world of technology. Feel free to leave your comments and questions below and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.